Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Anton of 2 as usual and today I've got another best for rest video of the 1k subscriber replay contest made up for you guys. And this is another really nice game that Austin Drew sent in in his Yak Tiger 8.8 and this is a tank that I'm really thinking about picking up on the live server because it seems to perform really really well and yeah just make up your own opinion in the course of this game. Now, Ostindru here is platooned up with his mate, Quickie Shot, and they're on Serene Coast and heading over to the right side here. I think this map was altered in patch. I I'm actually not quite sure. Was it 8.6? I really don't know. Let me know in the comments if you do. But anyway, this map was changed and they added this kind of little outcrop of land down here where Ostindru and his pal are just uh, progressing along. And this is a really, really good place to be in, in the Yak Tiger 8.8, because it's not the fastest tank in the world, but it can guard choke points like a boss. And, um, yeah, it's got really good DPM and really good rate of fire, but not that high alpha damage. And the fact that it cannot be outflanked here that easily, and it can't get uh, shot at from the sides because of this kind of little hill or ridge here that's protecting it, mean that it's in a really, really strong position to... Uh, advance aggressively and really uh, really push the enemy back. So right here you can see the really good rate of fire on this gun here. You can see that uh, Austin Drew is just chewing these tier 7 and 8 to bits here. Uh, actually the Jagd Tiger 8.8 .8 has got exactly the same gun as the Jagd Panther at tier 7 or the Tiger too, for example, but it's better because it's got better rate of fire, better accuracy and so on. So he's quickly thinking about shooting at the Tiger too, but he retreats into cover, so he decides to focus down the Black Prince first. Picks up a sure kill, securing first on his platoon. And now he goes for the Cupola on the Yak Tiger, uh, not on the Yak Tiger, sorry, on the Tiger too, and uh, snipes it, securing the second kill. And yeah, this is just the great advantage of accuracy and great rate of fire on this tank. Now, uh, he wants to shoot at this Tiger 2 up there on the ridge, but he can't quite make the shot before he retreats. So what he decides to do now is he decides to drive up on this little hill behind him to be able to hit those guys, which is a really clever decision to make, because uh, if he would go round, he would expose himself to enemy fire. Now, his platoon might being attacked by a very aggressive 110, and Austin Ru here is in a bit of a difficult situation because turning around to fight this 110 means that he's giving a side to the Yak Panther and the Tiger 2 on the ridge. But he manages to take him out quickly before the Yak Panther and the Tiger 2 are able to react. And the Yak Panther is taken out by I'm not quite sure who, but he's taken out anyway. Now the Tiger 2 is relocated. You can see he's there where the other Yak Tiger, the stock Yak Tiger, died before him. And um, now. Uh, Austin Drew's platoon mate died, but uh, he's going to really push for pace here and try to advance into the enemy base. Now he got a shot into the ARL up there, so he's facing two enemies right now. Um, and yeah, let's see if he can get another hit in here. But he decides to ignore the ARL, which is the right decision, I think, because that means that he can take out the Tiger 2, which is a lot more dangerous tank. And now this was a bit of a shame because uh, the ARL-44 was tracked there, I think. And if he had been able to aim a bit longer and then put a shot through his front drive wheel, he would have been remained tracked in place. And Ostrinu would have been able to take him out a lot easier. Which, as you will see in a second, would have changed the, yeah, the course of the battle quite a bit. So the ARL, you can see, is retreating a bit, but he's not quite sure what to do at this point. Now he's popped off Austin Drew's radar, and Austin Drew's on four kills here, so he's having a really good game. The score's 8-6, though, and yeah, it's all still open, because the enemies, for example, have still got two very uh, dangerous tier 8 tank destroyers, while the allied team has only got Austin Drew himself as a tier 8. So yeah, it's all bought over yet. Anything can still happen, basically. So he has to really stay cool here and carry his team through. Now the score is 8 to 7, so the Rhymus Hell was able to take out another of Austin Drew's allies out. So the ARL you can see is retreating. He hasn't got the top gun, which is quite good. And now Austin Drew spotted again. And he wants to go round to chase the 
uh, for ARL, but then an SU-152, an ISU-152 appears, and that's a really dangerous enemy. Now, he's waggling his hole, and the ISU could one-shot him, but he doesn't. He takes out his trap, leaves him on 120 health, but he doesn't roll high enough, and uh, leaves Ostindru here alive. Now, Ostindru, in my opinion, makes a bit of a mistake here, because he puts one shot into the ARL, which gives the ISU time to reload, but he ricochets again, which is really, really lucky, because it allows Ostindru to pick up his fifth kill on the ISU, but in my opinion, that was a real mistake there, because uh, usually the ISU would not bounce off the hull of a Yak Tiger, and therefore, actually, usually he would have been dead in that situation. And he really should have made the all shots count and make all shots hit uh, that SU-152 ISU because it was definitely the more dangerous target. Now, an enemy tiger there is focusing on other allies of Austin Rue, so he's able to quickly snipe the Nashorn through a gap in the houses, which was quite cheeky there. And now he can work the rear of his tiger one here, who's turning around and he's has to be careful here because he's on very very low health and if the tiger one manages to shoot slow glacius he would still be able to take him out but um he gets his eighth kill and the radley walters medal and now things are looking a lot better for austin Drew's team here because there's only a rhine metal borsic waffen trigger and the panther left on the enemy team fair enough the rhine metal is on four kills so he definitely knows what he's doing but still realistically his team would have to be really big donkeys to lose this one. Now he's being very clever here because he's staying behind the railway line knowing that he's on very low health and if he advances and the Rhine Metal spots him with his superior view range he will be able to absolutely wreck him with that 128mm gun. But now I think he starts to get a bit greedy because I mean he can still get a pools medal here. and. He fires a shot at the front rifle of a Rhine Metal Borsic. That was a very well aimed shot because it took out his tracks clean. But in turn, the Rhine Metal was able to kill Ostindru here. I don't want to take anything away from Ostindru because he played an amazing game, getting 8 kills with a Radley Walters medal and, yeah, you know, just basically carrying his team through. Uh, but still. If he had taken that shot at the Rhine Metal Borsic weapon Traeger a little bit earlier. Um, he probably would have been able to track him in a place where the Waffentrager probably wouldn't have had the gun depression to hit him, and then he would have been able to chew him to bits with his DPM, so that would have been a lot better. And in my opinion, if he hadn't uh, rushed a shot on the ARL earlier, and then he would have been able to take him out because he would have been able to track him in place, he would have been able to focus on the ISU, and the ISU wouldn't have been able to get another shot into him, which would have meant that he would have had have 850 health about to face the Rhine Metal, and in turn maybe would have been able to take the Rhine Metal out. So, in my opinion, the main mistake that Austin Rue did in this game was not to aim at the front drive wheel of the ARL 44 long enough, but, I mean, that was really the only mistake he did in this game and yeah it was just a really good game eight kills and yeah really really good um so yeah that's just quickly check out the post game stats to see how good exactly it was so these are the results of that game he got an amazing 440,366 credits that's absolutely ridiculous he, that must have been some kind of special i cannot believe that was just for what he did although what he did was really good um, he got 2,652 experience and that was not doubled so that was with a premium account but it wasn't a double he got his ace tanker badge uh, a Radley Walters medal obviously and the top gun and all of those well deserved and look at this the list of tanks that he damaged spotted critted killed is just really long um, in the team score, obviously he came first, scoring 1,768 experience. That's an absolutely massive result. And you wouldn't expect it, but this M18 Hellcat here also did really well, getting 1,162 experience. Now, fair enough, he only got one kill, but he picked up 2,000 damage, and he was a tier 6 tank 
in a tier 8 game, so that was really good. But still, uh, obviously, Austin Drew here was the star of the team with 5,000 damage, 8 kills, and nearly 1,800 damage. On the enemy team, the Rheumatel Borsig Waffentrager was really good, getting nearly 800 experience for a loss. So I'm really sorry for this guy here because he played an amazing game. He nearly got to Radley Walters as well, but he ended up losing. So that was just really tough luck for this German tank destroyer here on the enemy team. Uh, in the detailed report screen, we can see that Austin Drew fired 32 shots, of which 27 hit and 25 penetrated, which is a really, really good ratio, allowing him to do 5 thousand damage that's massive like uh, i wouldn't be ashamed of that in my tier 10 heavy tank like the is4 i wouldn't even be ashamed of that in for example my fosh 155 and that's a tier 10 tank destroyer so uh, for a tier 8 premium tank that's really good uh, he received 18 hits of which only six penned and 12 didn't which showcases the Amazing trolling potential of uh, of the Yak Tiger 8.8's armor at tier 8. He received 5,800 potential damage, which is even more than the damage he dealt out. He detected one enemy only, but he damaged 10, which is two thirds of the enemy team, and destroyed 8. He also picked up 712 uh, assistance damage. That was also for tracking and stuff. So, yeah, very well done. Uh, and, yeah, obviously, he got this ridiculous amount amount of credits which well actually without a premium account it was 300,000 but that's still not really credible I I that must have been a special because I can't imagine anybody getting that amount of credits even in a game this good so anyway um, that was um, all for today and I hope you appreciated it and I've got some more great stuff coming up soon. For example, probably a T29 review coming up tomorrow. And also stay tuned for more stuff about this replay contest. More best of the rest videos coming up. And uh, then finally the winners, probably at the beginning of April. So I'm looking forward to that. I hope you are too. And consider rating my video below or even subbing to my channel. And I hope I see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.